Welcome to the roundtable, everyone. At this point, thank you for joining us to hear more about SUNY's great story that, and work they're doing. Uh, so at this point, I'll turn it over to our first presenter, Cindy Proctor uh, from the system office. So Cindy. Thank you so much, Kelly. Good morning, everyone. We are so excited to be here today to talk to you about scaling high quality micro-credential programs and sharing SUNY's story. I am so fortunate to be joined um, by colleagues from three of our fantastic campuses, SUNY Cobleskill, Fulton Montgomery Community College, and the University at Albany. I'm gonna ask each of them to introduce themselves as they start their slides so that you can put a name to a face, um, but I so appreciate uh, them participating today and they are just tremendous leaders in our system. I think many of you know SUNY is the largest comprehensive system of higher education in the United States. And that means that we have under one umbrella community colleges, technology colleges, comprehensive colleges, and research institutions and doctoral degree granting um, institutions. Uh, and that includes our one research centers. Uh, we have 64 campuses located across New York State. Uh, and you can see this map of New York here is shaded by color to reflect the 10 economic development regions of the state. Uh, New York is particularly focused on supporting uh, business and industry, and that has led to um, a strong um, support for our micro-credential program. And I'll talk a little bit more about that. The campuses that you see in hot pink uh, represent campuses with micro-credential programs. So you can see we still have a bit of a gap up in the North Country and in the Western part of the state. Uh, we're working on that. Um, uh, of the 432 micro-credentials and 31 campuses, um, those numbers change uh, and grow rapidly. Uh, so I expect to see additional growth. In our current portfolio, 63% of the micro-credentials are credit bearing and 65% are stackable to certificate or degree programs. And that's because we have some non-credit micro-credentials that are also stackable uh, based on prior learning assessment or award of credit by evaluation. We have 79% of our micro-credentials are open to the public, another four um, with the approval of the dean or department chair. Um, and 17% right now are reserved strictly for students, existing students. We only have 44% of our micro-credentials online, um, another 20% are hybrid and 36% uh, are face-to-face. And part of this, part of the reason for that is because our micro-credential programs do tend to be locally focused. They're informed by um, industry and professional standards at the national and international level, but they are designed to respond to local workforce needs. And I think that is a, a niche um, that SUNY has carved out um, in this competitive market space. Um, but I do hope that we will see um, more micro-credentials moving online. I will tell you that SUNY micro-credentials have been in the news a bit in New York in the past month or so. And the inquiries that we've been um, getting from businesses are asking us for, for credit and online. Um, and part of that is because businesses want to be able to use SUNY micro-credentials as part of their employee benefits program, right? Um, and I think that points to um, the strength uh, of our program, which is that SUNY's micro-credential program is policy-driven. Um, we adopted, we were one of the first um, institutions or systems of higher education to adopt a comprehensive micro-credential policy in 2018 and uh, very intentional about quality, um, making sure that micro-credentials had the same um, rigor um, as our certificate or degree programs. They are approved through an established faculty governance process. There are learning outcomes, assessments, student work product for both credit and non-credit micro-credentials. 
This is not a recognition of simple participation or community building. Um, we were intentional about alignment to um, industry and professional standards. Um, again, this is something that has resonated well with um, New York State um, business and industry. Many of our micro credentials were developed in partnership with them. Um, many embed industry or professional certifications along with relevant coursework in the micro credential. And we're really committed to having micro credentials have immediate value. Um, sorry about that. Um, immediate workforce ready skills, and then wherever possible, also serve as a pathway to additional credentials, right? So you could take a SUNY micro credential and get an entry level job, or um, move forward in an existing position, or be ready to respond to new responsibilities that are coming your way, right? Um, but we also are cognizant of the fact that we we want to provide pathways for individuals to learn more and continue to grow in their careers. Um, so whether that be other micro-credentials, certificates, degrees, um, right now SUNY has micro-credentials that stack to certificates, associate degrees, bachelor's degrees, master's degrees, advanced certificates, the PhD, the PharmD, the OD, the DDS, and the MD. Um, so we're trying to um, um, provide pathways for individuals to um, move through um, the higher ed system while earning relevant skills. And of course, we want our micro credentials to be portable, transcripted, and um, many of our campuses um, use a digital badge to recognize completion of the micro credential. And of course, um, uh, we strongly encourage the IMS Global Open Badge Standard. Um, the SUNY's policy was also very intentional in um, saying right from the beginning that we wanted to allow for faculty innovation and wanted to allow for micro-credentials to serve a wide range of audiences. So we have micro-credentials for existing students that are designed to motivate them to persist and complete. Um, and also to provide immediate recognition for skills mastered that help them land, you know, that internship that they want or even a part-time job in the field. Um, for prospective students, we're using micro-credentials as, you know, a highlight of their degree program if it has micro-credentials embedded. We've also used micro-credentials um, during the pandemic where we saw students saying that they needed to take a gap year, that you know they were caring for a parent or a family member. And so instead of being out of school for an entire year, um, can we keep them connected with micro-credentials? Um, for SUNY employees, alumni, incumbent workers, we're talking about upskilling, professional development. Really the same is true with our P12 and community organizations too. What you know, training and upskilling can we provide to support them? Um, and of course, in all of these categories, there are adult learners. Um, but I wanted to note specifically um, our sort of care and attention here. Um, we do see value of, in SUNY micro credentials for bringing adult learners to higher education for the first time or back to higher education after a long period of time. And you know, this aligns with the priorities of our governor, Kathy Hochul. And I know it aligns with uh, priorities in many states, right? Um, and so this idea of um, allowing adults to start with just a small piece of curriculum, um, the average number of credits in a SUNY micro-credential is nine, um, rather than having to immediately commit to a certificate or a degree, um, we've found has been received really well. Um, uh, like many of you, we do deal with the challenge of micro-credentials not being eligible for financial aid for non-matriculated students. Um, we are very hopeful that we will see some movement on part-time Pell. Um, 
and we actually have an opportunity perhaps for some part-time support in New York State under its tuition assistance program. That was something that was recommended by our governor. Um, so we're very appreciative of that and hope that works. Um, we're also um, talking with our local workforce investment boards about federal WIOA funding and could that be applied to um, our micro credentials. So, um, so we're moving forward, but, but we recognize that that funding remains a challenge. Um, uh, sorry for this, there's a lot on this slide, but you know, when you think about scaling and growing a program, right? It's just like any other decision that you make, it's gotta be data driven, right? So the key question for individual campuses is, you know, have I met um, what we set out as our key indicators of effectiveness, right? Um, is there consistency in quality, right? And for SUNY, that means, are you aligned to your local campus policy and the big system policy? Um, is there a sufficient program awareness? Um, do, is there unmet need and demand? And the answer to that is, I'm sure, yes. But do you understand it? And do you know what people are looking for? Um, what's the early assessment of your work, right? What's the feedback from students, faculty, partners? Um, what are outcomes? Are students persisting in your micro-credentials? Are they completing? What's happening after they complete? Are they enrolling in the related degree program? Um, can you scale um, um, without sacrificing quality? Do you have the staffing to do that? Can you ramp up communications and marketing? Are your internal processes streamlined for admission, registration, support, um, and the ability to follow student progress over time? Um, and, and how are your partnerships, right? Um, so much of SUNY's growth has come from um, pounding the pavement, right? Not everybody knew what a micro-credential was. And so our individual campuses have, you know, talked with their students and their faculty and faculty governance and staff. And from the system level, I've been doing some of those same things. Um, lots of travel to campuses to um, share um, what other institutions are doing, um, meeting with chambers of commerce and the New York State, uh, the Business Council of New York State. Um, so that status of, of partners and the awareness of micro-credentials and, and the work that you're doing is important. At an individual campus level, you know, this is not set in stone, but I have seen patterns of growth. And so for those that just come on board, um, they generally start with between one and five micro credentials that can vary. Um, uh, and then, you know, there is sort of this little testing period as everybody gets used to this and they start to get initial feedback. And so then I see growth between five and 15 micro credentials. And, you know, they hover there for a little bit. And then, you know, I think um, we spent an awful lot of time focused on building the micro credentials and quality. And so we want to make sure that um, um, uh, we, we have the marketing support behind it, right? That was something we didn't think about enough. And then um, uh, once they get to really be comfortable, then we start to see the larger scaling, right? So we have campuses with 40, 50, 60 micro-credentials. Um, from the system level, um, we were kind of wondering, you know, when is the right time to do this, impacted by the pandemic a little bit, but we saw such tremendous growth between 2021 and 2022 that we knew that we needed to launch a new website, right? And we knew that we needed to have um, uh, access, we needed to improve access to the system-wide micro-credentials. So we created um, a, the first searchable directory. We issued a messaging guide, right? Part of the value of having a policy-driven program is that, you know, we should have some consistency in messaging, but we have 64 campuses and they're all a little bit different and you'll hear some of that today. Um, and so uh, we sent out a guide about, okay, well, if we're going to market this program, let's all, you know, be on the same page. 
And um, we did everything from, you know, sample email texts and headers to different audiences, posters and flyers, um, customizable social media templates, um, guidance about engaging with partners. Um, and that was received well. We also um, sent that guidance to our New York State partners. And this is really all work done in-house um, at SUNY System. We have a um, great assistant provost in our communications, um, assistant vice chancellor, I'm sorry, in our communications office, Kyle Adams, who, who really did a lot of this work. Um, and we said, okay, we're gonna announce it now. And so we always share, you know, potential press releases with our governor. And um, she ended up um, wanting to announce this herself because she said this really aligns with my priorities around adult education, around supporting New York State business, around student success. Um, and so um, when the governor issued a press release, um, that was pretty amazing for us. And it included quotes from um, the higher education committees of both houses of our legislature, from the president of the Business Council of New York State, from the commissioner of the New York State Department of Labor. And so, you know, we got great um, media coverage, but maybe even more important was we started to see different state agencies also talking about micro-credentials and even customizing um, messaging. Um, this is one from um, NYSERDA about green energy and uh, renewable energy and green building. And so we started to um, really have sort of this buzz in the state about micro-credentials. And that I think is going to um, be the foundation of our growth going forward. Uh, let me turn it now over to my colleague, Deb Purnett. Thank you, Cindy. Hello, everyone. It's a pleasure being here today with you and my colleagues. My name is Deb Purnett, and I am the Program Coordinator for the Institute for Rural Vitality at SUNY Cobleskill. I just wanted to give you a little of the groundwork for micro-credentials on our campus. We offer 18 credit-bearing micro-credentials and are working on more every day. We, offer, we also have a fairly robust non-credit offering, which have high enrollments. We currently have 14 MCs in development with over 30 different credential initiatives. And then I just wanted to cover some of the stats. Um, some of them are pretty interesting, but we've seen 51% increase in enrollments for micro-credentials from spring 2021 to fall 2021. Um, and that goes off of what Cindy said during the pandemic. We've definitely seen, seen an increase in inquiries and in enrollments. And we've also seen a 2,200% increase in the number of badges offered in a two-year period. <clears throat> Just to kind of specify um, and clarify, not all of our badges offered are micro-credentials because they don't specifically fall in line with SUNY's policy. However, they still can utilize and displaying the badges to show their accomplishments, skills, and competencies. Okay, Cindy, you can change it. The most important part of micro-credentials is faculty buy-in. This is paramount. Our foundation started in 2016 when our president served on SUNY's micro-credential task force, but it really began in January of 2020 when Cindy Proctor visited our campus and offered an information, information session on micro-credentials for faculty and staff. Following her presentation, our president, Dr. Marion Terenzio, continued to lay the foundation. Every opportunity she had, she discussed micro-credentials and the changing landscape of higher ed. At every president's forum, faculty meeting, convocation, she mentioned micro-credentials. Then Dr. Terenzio appointed a micro-credential team comprised of faculty and professionals to lead this initiative. Faculty then started approaching us and we started approaching faculty with micro-credential ideas. We were brainstorming to see what do we already have available that we could easily align 
with a micro credential. And that was for credit and non credit. Next was to con consult faculty governance to establish local policies and procedures for micro credentials. The deans played an intricate role in helping to support this by offering incentives to faculty to develop micro credentials. On the non credit side of MCs, we followed our current profit share model to incentivize faculty and professionals. Departments would get a percent of the profit and the faculty and staff would get paid as instructors. This has been very, a very successful model for our continuing education programs. Therefore, we continued this practice. Lastly, the micro-credential team offers workshops annually to educate the campus on micro-credentials, why the importance of micro-credentials and benefits to faculty and departments. Next slide. Another key component of micro-credentials, like everything else, is promotion, as Cindy discussed. Our user-friendly website has been a very effective tool for our micro-credentials. It is clean, informative, and detailed enough for people to inquire about MCs. As you can see, the left side of the slide is a specific micro-credential page. It offers the description, the learning outcomes, the skills acquired, and the stackability potential for degrees. The right side of the screen is our inquiry form. This is the call to action. This allows us to get inquiries information and follow up with specifics of each micro-credential they are interested in. In addition to all the important information on this form, an extremely helpful question is where did you hear about this? That assists with assessing the effectiveness of our promotional efforts. I have to add that SUNY's promotion has been highly effective with inquiries regarding our MCs. So kudos to Cindy and her team. Next. With our diverse micro-credential offering, now we are refocusing on increasing enrollments. We have a summer micro-credential initiative. You can see the flyer on the right side of the screen. We are offering five micro-credentials in two six-week blocks over the summer. These courses are offered online and asynchronous. How did we decide on these micro-credentials? Well, we consulted our community and industry partners and they led us to offer these micro-credentials in a shortened period of time this summer. Not only have we looked at degrees and said, what degrees do we have that can break down to micro-credentials, but what micro-credentials could lead to a new certificate to meet the needs of industry, hence the development of our supply chain certificate. A significant hurdle for micro-credentials is the lack of financial resources, as we know because Cindy mentioned that in her intro. Financial aid does not currently cover micro-credentials or part-time enrollment. We are hopeful that this will, with the changing landscape of higher ed, will change and financial aid will soon follow suit. SUNY Cobleskill is also working closely with our advancement office to partner with corporations to send their employees to us for training in certain micro-credentials. And lastly, we are working on integration into our student portal, Banner Web, so there is less manual work, more automation, and especially as we are looking to increase enrollments in this area. Thank you, Deb, that was terrific. Dan? Well, hello, everybody. Thank you, Cindy. Uh, great presentation, Deb and Deborah. Looking forward for yours next. But uh, my name is Dan Fogarty. I'm the Associate Dean of Academic and Student Affairs here at Bolton Montgomery Community College. So uh, the Lone Community College on this presentation. And uh, just a quick thank you to Cindy and her team. Uh, they've be, been beyond forward thinking um, in this whole process and has really began to change the landscape of uh, what I can speak for at least is, is the two-year community colleges uh, within the SUNY system. Uh, they've been results-driven, attentive, um, and as, as Cindy said as well too, the communications team uh, has really gone above and beyond to helping us market these uh, within our community. 
Um, we've been lucky here on our campus uh, to start a brand new department uh, just before we started to really uh, work on our micro credentials here at FM. So uh, our business and community partnership department is new. Um, and we have a new strategic plan here on our campus as well too. So it all entails with connecting to local businesses, adapting to their needs, uh, as well as the community's needs and leveraging uh, to benefit students in our community. So it's a really fitting model uh, to what these micro-credentials can do and enhance. And we'll talk about that on the next slide. So what we created here on our campus um, is really you know, nothing short of, a, of amazing as far as how quickly we were able uh, to put together this model and began to implement um, and put it into action. So we took our, our micro-credential model to really, and you, you've heard themes about this already uh, from Cindy and Deb, and, and you'll hear the same from Deborah as well too. Uh, but faculty um, have been beyond excited about this. Uh, our workforce development uh, partners uh, locally have been uh, equally uh, thrilled as well as our regional business and industry partners as well too. So um, they all create this piece of the pie here uh, to build these micro credentials for our community uh, that we have here. So we'll start with the faculty, uh, creating stackable credentials, obviously, as we mentioned, for entry level positions and enhanced skills for upskilling of workers. So this has been really something that our faculty have enjoyed to begin to create because uh, as we all know, um, between the pandemic and everything else, enrollment has been down um, at many of our institutions in certain programs. So this is a great way uh, to attract adult students into these programs that are looking to uh, maybe just move up the ladder in a job they're at or get an entry level position, but really expose them to higher education. And these micro-credentials do, do just that. Uh, so the faculty have really enjoyed creating, as Cindy said, those stackable programs um, that really can start here, uh, but they have the options to continue on uh, if necessary. And, and the faculty have also enjoyed the flexibility of being able to really create these uh, fairly quickly and, and with involvement, again, of our entire community uh, here within our region. So the next one would be workforce development. So our business and community partnership team. And just to give you a little bit of a, a background of our team, uh, this department took people and faculty and staff from every different part of our campus to really enhance our ability. I don't know about any other campuses here, um, but during my, my tenure and when I was in admissions, um, you know, we didn't work with workforce development too much. Um, in my side with academics, there wasn't a lot of work with workforce development, but the, the ability to bring workforce development into the academic side of the house and have it very much affect what programs we are offering, how we offer them, and what ones we need to offer has been uh, really a game changer uh, for our campus over the last year or so. Uh, so it's been a really nice mix with that. Not to mention that our uh, Montgomery County Business Development Center and our Fulton County Center for Regional Growth have been utilizing uh, micro-credentials in their promotions to attract new businesses here and to help current businesses fill the employment gaps uh, that they're having. So, so we're for surely having more of an impact because of micro-credentials on our local community, which of, of course, anybody here that's you know at a community college knows that uh, one of the constant struggles is showcasing your value uh, within the community. And that is vitally important you know, to, to our sustainability is showcasing that value. And these micro-credentials um, and the forward thinking that SUNY does has helped that. And the last is, um, you know, the regional businesses and industry. So it is these companies, these businesses that are here that need our assistance um, to fill, fill their workforce gap uh, or to help entry-level workers realize they can stay at this company by taking a micro-credential and moving up the ladder and upskilling themselves. So we've really tried to work with them. And, and uh, we can go to the next slide. 
and uh, talk about you know different ways and, and promotions that we've worked. So we've taken that model and we've built out more promotional uh, and marketing uh, materials so that we can go into these companies. And again, like I said, our team now comprises of business faculty, admission staff, academic advisors, workforce development, um, and then the academic side of the house. So it really combines you know, a nice mix of people to go into these businesses and create these, these micro credentials based on um, what they need. Uh, it also has done something that we didn't even factor in, which is it has changed the mindset of our faculty on how they deal with our local workforce and businesses. Uh, it's not just micro credentials. They now stack these micros on top of their certificates and associates degrees and meld them to make them more flexible for the businesses in which our students will go into and work. So in essence, this area has really changed the dynamics of all of our programs here on campus. So it's, it's nice to have these extra marketing efforts for it. Go to the next slide. Um, so, so just in closing, you know, we're clearly working uh, on these as fast as we can as well too. Uh, we've worked with admissions. So whether we're looking for new students, uh, former students or current students, uh, we want to let them know about these, these micro-credentials that will enhance uh, their careers. So again, you know, if you have any questions, you know, I'd be happy to answer them afterwards. Uh, but I thank you all for coming. And I think I'll be turning it back to Cindy and then Deborah. Thank you so much, Dan. That was, that was terrific. And now let's turn to uh, Deborah. Hey, everybody. Thank you, Cindy. Um, I'm Deborah Gelinas. I am the Assistant Vice Provost for Academic Innovation at the University at Albany. Um, UAlbany is a very large R1 research institution. Uh, we have over 13,000 undergraduates and approximately 4,500 graduate students. Uh, we have nine schools and colleges. So um, as such, bringing any sort of new initiative to the university um, can uh, involve a, a, a lot of work and uh, uh, consensus <laughs> building and buy-in and uh, micro-credentialing certainly was no exception. And in fact, it was a really uh, fun and exciting challenge to be able to build micro-credentials from the ground up at UAlbany because it was such a new concept. Um, I had the privilege of working with Cindy and others at SUNY as we were getting, excuse me, getting everything launched initially, um, which really um, helped provide the framework because of the policy that SUNY created um, governing this process for all of the campuses, which as Cindy mentioned, um, the 64 uh, institutions across our system are all very different. And so we've all taken really uh, unique approaches to uh, how to uh, create micro-credentials. Um, and every campus does it a little bit differently, but the SUNY policy has really helped us be able to have some framework for how we handle micro-credentials on each campus that are, are doing these programs. Um, so once SUNY's policy um, was approved, we began working on our own policy. It took us, um, close to a year um, to get that policy approved by our university Senate. Um, so I spent a lot of time drafting and rewriting the policy um, and working with our different groups within our governance structure to refine that policy. That helped us get buy-in buy across campus with faculty and leadership. Um, but, you know, I, I really was a one woman operation moving a lot of this forward. And so, you know, we've all talked about how um, there are some challenges building uh, these programs to scale uh, based on the fact that, um, uh, you know, often there's just one champion <laughs> um, at the campuses that move these things forward. So in April of 2019, we got our policy approved. Within that policy, uh, we have um, three types of micro-credentials. So they're all, and I'm gonna talk a little bit more about those in a minute, 
they're all governed by this one particular process and policy, but they all look a little different. And we thought that by having different categories, it would help us um, and the faculty who were proposing these programs visualize what they could look like. Um, so our, our uh, proposal process, faculty must identify in that proposal how what they're proposing, the program they're proposing aligns with industry uh, standards. So we wanted all of these, regardless of what they looked like, to be aligned with industry need and skills and competencies that are in demand for the particular field. Um, so that has to be articulated in the uh, uh, proposal. That has not always been easy for faculty to wrap their head around um, how that should look because that's not necessarily how they normally create um, courses. So um, I've worked really closely with a lot of faculty to help them figure out how to create these programs. Um, and once the proposal comes in, it then goes to a committee of faculty and staff who then evaluate the proposal. We often have the person who proposed the program come to us to um, uh, then uh, talk about their program and we can answer questions uh, live so that we can then vote on whether or not we approve the program or if there needs to be changes. Uh, all of our micro-credentials, regardless of the category that they're in, um, are all uh, recognized um, and awarded through uh, a digital badge. And um, so what that means is technically what, what we do in order to award the micro-credential is that we require every single one of our programs to have a final product at the end. And that final product or learning artifact should then demonstrate the skills and competencies developed that are outlined in the learning objectives and goals for the program. And so that learning artifact is what is then evaluated by our faculty. Um, and then once that earner demonstrates that they have these skills and competencies, they then get the badge um, for the awarded micro-credential. We thought that that was really important because as Cindy mentioned earlier, it's not just um, participation, uh, it's uh, being able to actually demonstrate skills and, and competencies earned and, and developed through the program, and that provides value um, for the earner and whoever is evaluating externally the credential to determine whether or not the earner has the skills and competencies. It's also a great way to get the earner to be better at articulating that they have the skills and competencies that we say that they're going to have gotten from the program. Um, we know that that people, students, uh, traditional students, non-traditional students, they develop skills and competencies that sometimes they're not good at talking about to other audiences. Um, by uh, demonstrating through the learning artifacts that they have these, these competencies, it helps them better articulate it to other audiences. Um, so, so far we have approved 42 micro-credentials. We're actually um, just about to approve our 43rd. Uh, we had a little bit of a slowdown with the pandemic, <laughs> but we're back on track and we're doing some pretty exciting things on our campus now. Um, Cindy, if you could move to the next slide, that would be great. So I mentioned the categories. I'm gonna talk a little bit now about the different categories that we have. Um, one is skills badges. Um, these, we just launched a series of 10 new skills badges. Um, these are all uh, self-paced, delivered asynchronous, asynchronously online. They take about 12 to 15 hours for um, someone to complete one of these skills badges. Um, they are developed by experts in the field. Some are adjuncts, um, some are um, uh, experts that actually do work in the field as working professionals. Um, and uh, they um, are a really interesting opportunity for learners at all levels to be able to develop these discrete skills and competencies. So we have these open to undergraduate, uh, graduate students and non-matriculated learners. Um, anyone can participate. There are very few, if any, prerequisites. Um, so it's a great way if somebody is an English, English major that's interested in developing a technical skill to be able to then uh, build on that knowledge um, 
through being able to participate in one of these skills badges. Um, so some examples include AI fundamentals, mobile app design, self-publishing, social media influencer marketing, solving problems with Python, and sustainability for organizations. We also have some other skills badges that are a little bit different. Uh, for example, we have a Tableau badge. That curriculum was created by a particularly, particular faculty matter, member to embed in her courses. So she delivers that content through undergraduate and graduate level courses in the School of Business. So only students that are enrolled in those courses at this point have an opportunity to participate um, in that particular, to earn that badge. The other skills badges that I've been talking about are non-credit, but they're just a great opportunity to be able to, to gain those skills and competencies. Cindy, if you move on to the next one, it'd be great. Um, another uh, category that we have is career pathways. These have been very popular at the undergraduate level. Um, these are more of a uh, credit bearing, typically opportunities. So we'll have two or three classes, often some sort of experiential learning component, um, which you know I, I think we all know that having the opportunity to develop these uh, skills and competencies is great but also being able to um, embed some experiential learning into the experience and the, the learning pathway is a really, really great chance for them to test out those skills and competencies and be able to enhance that experience. Um, these opportunities stack into degree and certificate programs. Um, so, and, and they're often inter interdisciplinary. So we have an eSport micro-credential that um, has courses that are offered from two different schools and colleges on our campus, as well as um, has an internship experience that's required as part of that particular program. Um, some other examples of our uh, career pathways include astroparticle physics. That particular program is, a, is the physics department believed was a great opportunity for students to develop um, competencies um, and uh, get some educational experience in an area that would help them move on to graduate programs in that space. So it's not necessarily about developing skills and competencies always that translate into professional um, careers, but also into academic career paths. Um, and then we have a core competencies and disaster preparedness career pathway, um, which has been uh, very popular. Um, next slide, please, Cindy. I apologize, I'm trying to talk quickly because I know that um, we want to have time for questions at the end. Uh, finally, our uh, third category is professional development. Um, we are in the process of uh, launching a professional studies initiative on our campus and uh, micro-credentials are a big part of that strategy. And um, so there have been several new micro-credentials developed in that space as part of our professional uh, studies initiative. Um, so we also have our School of Education has done a um, international e-series um, of workshops uh, that they have then turned into a series of micro-credentials. Um, for international uh, education professionals, um, typically at uh, colleges and universities. I'll give you a few examples of some of our approved um, professional development micro-credentials. We've got coaching for leaders and managers. We've got marketing management, nonprofit grant writing, organizational solutions for diversity, equity, inclusion, and sense of belonging. Uh, we also have um, our College of Emergency Preparedness Homeland Security and Cybersecurity, which is a mouthful, we call it CEHC for short. <laughs> They've uh, launched one called Librarians of Second Responders, which is a really neat. So, so we have the opportunity to do a lot of really neat things. Um, and it's been really fun to watch the faculty and the departments get excited about uh, what we have to offer. Um, I have one more slide, Cindy, and then... Um, which I can run through quick, pretty quickly. Uh, I, I wanted to touch on the marketing and promotion piece. 
Um, you can see a sample of our uh, flyer here for the new skills badging initiative that we launched recently that went to our current students. They are free for our current students. They're $150 for any non-matriculated learner. Um, so we've really tried to make these accessible um, uh, to everyone, um, which has been really important to me and to the university. Uh, we also, our professional studies um, program is starting to do a lot of marketing and promotion on social media. Our, uh, the new SUNY website that Cindy walked everyone through earlier has been, the directory has helped drive some, some people to us. We've had some registrations externally thanks to that wonderful directory. Um, so um, we really have uh, just started intentionally marketing um, these programs and we still have um, things that we need to do to uh, build infrastructure. Um, but we've really um, been excited about the foundation that we've been able to create for these programs and are looking forward to what we can do in the future. Thanks, everybody. Thank you so much. So you can see we have just um, tremendous folks on our campuses who are leading this work. And um, I saw there were some questions in the chat about, you know, how many staff do you have? And um, I think um, pretty much all of us were started as one person teams. Um, just in the last, you know, six months, I got some help from our communications department, but until then, I was a one woman show here at System, and I know that was the case at many of our campuses, um, but we are starting to change that now. Everyone knows that we, we had the right idea and they're jumping on board, um, but integrating micro credentials into the operations of, you know, the regular operations of campuses is essential. To support growth right you just you can't assess your program you can't grow it if you don't have that type of integration there was a couple of questions too cindy about um are your micro credentials that are non-credit are they showing up on a transcript are they only in the badging platforms and then what does the conversion process like process look like if they do a non-credit and go to a credit um, I can I can start with that. We we are encouraging um, all micro credentials to be transcripted. Um, right now, I think most of our campuses are transcripting for credit micro credentials, but we are working on that. Um, we have, you know, we have a lower percentage of non-credit micro credentials generally right now, um, but we are working hard at. Um, identifying every pathway that we can to move students from non-credit to credit, and that's being done through a prior learning assessment process. But the idea is to get that done up front. So even if you have a business that's been coming to you for continuing education for some time, it's always been non-credit, but now you have an opportunity to say to them, well, actually, you know, this is now part of a micro-credential, our faculty have already looked at this. And so you can tell your employees, once they complete this, they'll have six credits completed toward XYZ program. I don't know if anyone else wants to jump in on that question. So do you charge the same? <laughs> uh, that's a really good question. Um, so in New York State, um, we do not have official guidance on what you can charge for non-credit instruction. I don't know why that's the case, um, but when we first introduced micro-credentials and suddenly we were kind of breaking down the silo between continuing ed and academic affairs, pricing became a real issue, right? Because you can't charge um, you know, uh, a higher amount on the non-credit side and then a lower amount on the credit side. They have to be comparable. And so um, Ulster Community College, I think was our first campus that really redesigned their entire um, pricing structure to make sure that it was consistent across credit and non-credit and um, individual campuses are, are working on that. Our Cindy, are you able to share the system level policy or any of the campuses willing to share a link to their policies that they were created? There was a request to share those um, for those who have to develop their own yet. Yeah, sure. Um, you should be able to get at um, most of those. 
Um, I think I have cultural skills in Albany's, but we can get Fulton Montgomery's too on the SUNY, the new SUNY website. If you scroll down toward the bottom, there's a link um, about our program and our story. And if you scroll down to the bottom of that page, <laughs> there are links to sort of the key um, documents. If they're not there, I'll get them and I'll send those to you, um, Kelly. Okay, thank you. Um, what about training for, fac for faculty on how to create micro-credentials? Has there been any pushback about uh, micro-credential being similar to a minor, but not the same number of credits? How has that conversation been going with faculty? Um, I can, I don't know if you yeah. want to. Yeah, no, I mean, I, I'll just speak on behalf of our campus. It's been, um, it's been surprisingly, you know, very positive. You know, I know that there is always that concern um, <clears throat> that you will always have to reiterate with your faculty that, uh, you know, this isn't taking away uh, a certificate or an associate. It's enhancing what your particular area offers and actually has a better opportunity to attract more students into your other programs uh, in the future. So we speak every fall and every spring uh, for a short period of time at each department chair uh, meeting and, and really uh, kind of go through that. Obviously, you know, we created that BCP team and, um, you know, we, we meet individually with faculty um, regularly as well too. Um, if they're starting a micro, um, almost finishing up or, or working on that. So we try and be engaged in the process because we're kind of the facilitators between the faculty and our local uh, businesses who are looking for these. So um, it's, you know, I, I think with, with down enrollment, I think everybody is um, up for trying something different. And the fact that this has been very positive over the last, you know, few years, as far as micro-credentials coming on board, and, and all the positive uh, things that have come along and about it. You know, some of our programs here that have jumped on the micro-credential bandwagon early uh, are seeing their enrollments go up, you know? So I think other programs are seeing that. So uh, faculty that may not have been as willing in the past to try something different like this, um, you know, are doing so. And I think once you've got the, the support of, of that particular faculty member or department, I think training is, is pretty quick um, as far as getting it on board, especially if you have some examples to rely upon from other areas as well too. I'll just add to that, you know, so our community colleges generally don't have minors. Um, this, is, this has been an issue that's been raised on our, among our comprehensive colleges. And, um, and so there, you know, we, we really do try to be careful in making the distinctions, right? So um, our minors at our comprehensive colleges anyway, um, you know, can average anywhere from 14 to 18 credits. Um, um, so we do try to think about micro-credentials as being smaller, small enough to even stack to a minor. Um, uh, so the, the micro component is, is very intentional. Um, also in New York State, we have a, a very specific uh, definition of certificate uh, in education law. So we're very careful to um, not refer to micro credentials as certificates and make sure that we're being um, cognizant of that. So I would encourage folks if they haven't already to make sure that you're thinking about what your state education department, education law says about terms like this. A uh, question about what kind of students are you, are you allowing students who are not part of the SUNY system to register for micro-credentials, perhaps somebody who's thinking about doing SUNY or even high school students to kind of jumpstart their degrees? Are you seeing that population enroll or are you targeting them at all? I can answer that question. Um, yeah, we're absolutely targeting um, students that aren't already in the system. So outside students um, or outside participants, as we like to call them at Cold Skill, <laughs> um, non-matriculated students, you know, again, that adult learner population, that population of high school graduates that aren't really keen on going to, to commit to two or four years of college 
um, and, and this being the access point for that population. So we're absolutely targeting those students as well as current students that just want to brush up and, and have a badge in, you know, human resource management or, you know, um, supply chain, something specific. One of the neatest things we did when we got the website up and running was I sent out a call for quotes from students and, you know, it revealed some interesting things that, you know, we hadn't really seen in the data yet because it's still new, but, you know, we had um, professionals from university in Tennessee taking a micro credential at SUNY Albany. Um, we had a um, uh, former New Yorkers now in Florida, taking micro credentials from Buffalo State College and then ultimately enrolling in the online master's program. Um, so, you know, this idea of these shorter pieces of curriculum as entry points to or back to higher education, really important. And I could also quickly address the high school piece. Um, we have been talking a little bit about that um, at UAlbany. Um, you know, it, it, that's interesting because uh, our, our skills badges, we have designed them um, to be uh, something that anyone could participate in regardless of what their background is. Um, and so we have talked about opening them up to high school students. Uh, Cindy mentioned that we're talking about uh, looking at micro-credentials for prior learning uh, credit, credit for prior learning. And so that population may be an interesting one to see if we can market some of these opportunities to high school students who um, then could then could then convert um, some of these non-credit experiences into credit if they're enrolled in some of our institutions. Um, so that is something that we look at. We're looking at right now. Yeah, SUNY in general has a large population of concurrently enrolled students, um, high school students. We have the PTEC program in New York State as well, where students are graduating from high school with their associate's degree completed. Um, but there are there are other opportunities. I will say I don't think any campuses any campus has done that yet. Great, and with that, we have just one minute to wrap up. So thank you all for the great information. Um, I've captured some of the links. I'll include some more. I'll, I'll find the link to the policy. Um, I will email a copy of the slides as well as this recording and those links out to all of the registered attendees. So thank you very much for coming today. Um, I did put a link in the chat if you'd provide any feedback. Thank you again to SUNY um, and the incredible work you are doing. So thanks everyone. Thank you for having us, Kelly. Thank you.